And because the Lubavitcher Rebbe said that the generation that went out of Egypt is us now. So a part of us was actually there. So imagine that you're in Mitzrayim and you've and you've and you've and you're feeling the pressures of all that is happening going on around you and you know that things are building up to some kind of climax and you yourself are there you were there you were experiencing the suffering of being in Mitzrayim. You were experiencing the traumas of being in Mitzrayim. You even went through the trauma of the Makas, Maka of Hoshech, in which you saw many people that you knew and loved not making it. And yet you are alive. And now you're called upon to go through some steps, to take some action. Mm -hmm. You're going to be setting aside a Korban Pesach. You're going to be risking your life to be associated with mm -hmm. an action that is against public opinion, that is against what everyone else in Egypt does that someone in your group or your circle, your husband, your father is going to go and purchase a sheep or you have sheep. And he's going to shech that sheep and you're going to have to deal with the discomfort of what will the neighbors think and what will the neighbors feel. And you do that. And then you pack up your things and you are out of that situation. You walk out of that situation. You walk out of all of hundreds of years of suffering and you walk out. And you have your matzot, you have your instruments and you are free. And you're walking into a new reality, a new Reality. So we in that period, right before the walking out, we're getting ready. We're looking at what needs to be shechted. Which avodazoras do we have that we're going to shecht on our front lawn for all the neighbors to see? What internal limitations do we have that we're going to have to separate from? distance ourselves from shecht, even if it's not public opinion. Are we going to go Instagram or TikTok? Okay, take your arms out to the side and lift them up to the ceiling and down the center line. Exhale. Take your arms out to the side and up and down the center line and exhale. And take your arms out to the side and up and down and exhale. And take your arms out to the side and up and down. And let's do it one more time, but this time slowly take your arms up. And once your arms are up, just bring your wrists together and open up your fingers like a channel and let's open up to the higher energies just keep sitting like that breathing in breathing out breathing in breathing out we've got a lot of higher energies to bring in right now we had the solstice. We have we had a new month of Nissan beginning. So when we sit, yeah, you can switch it off. Switch it off. 
when we sit bringing in energies from above, what energies are available to us to affect our journey? So we've got all these energies of new beginnings, all these energies of shift and change, all these energies of transformation that are present in the energy around us. Let's bring that down, close the palms of your hands and thumbs are pointing towards your heart. And let's do that again. Arms come out to the side and arms go up and press the wrists together and open up the fingers. And once again, we want to open up to what's available to us around us, this energy of shift and change and transformation and new beginnings. <clears throat> Let's bring it down slowly and stop at your third eye with your thumbs going towards your third eye. And we want to do a cleaning, a cleaning for Pesach. <clears throat> so take your thumbs and kind of go to your right side. To your right side. And take those thumbs and just circle around the right side of your head, just right side of your head. The way you take in information, the chokhmah, the wisdom, where you're getting your information from, where you're getting your news from, where you're getting your hashkoa from. Check it out. Does it have comets that needs to be emptied and needs to be cleaned? And then bring your thumb back to your third eye and take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. <clears throat> and let's go over to the Bina side and circle your thumbs around that left side of your being, of your head, of your consciousness. And search it out for hummus. Is there too much rush? too much rising of the yeast? Do you have time for integration of the things you learn and the things you encounter? Are you digesting? Are you integrating? Are you processing all that you learn and encounter? And then bring the thumb back to that third eye and then down to your heart. And let's take the arms out to the side one more time. And breathing in, up, up, up. Up above your crown chakra, your keter, connect the wrists, open the palms of your hands to above. And you're receiving energy, higher energies, connecting to the spring, to this new birth, to the beginnings to the shifts that are being made available to us now. And then come down and bring your thumbs down, 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 touch your third eye and continue down to your heart center, to the center of Tiferet. So your thumbs are pointing towards your heart. Thumbs are open and pointing towards your heart. So I learned recently that Tiferet has 365 lights, one light for every day in the solar count. So just breathe into that heart mm -hmm. center. And then from that heart center, let's stretch the arms out, stretch the arms out to each side of the room. And let's take that right arm and just let it make a circle, right arm. Your circle of influence, your <laughs> circle of giving, your circle of loving. How does that circle feel? Does it have glitches in it? Does it have breaks in it? How is your energy flowing from your heart into that heart center? Mm. And then take that right arm and fold it back towards your heart. And your left arm is extending out to the side. That's your arm of boundaries and gavura. Let's make a nice circle of that left arm. 
So your boundaries are there to protect what you think is precious. So as you're making the circle with your left arm, so you are the person who's making boundaries in your world mm -hmm. to protect what you declare or what you feel is precious for you. So notice that boundary. Are the boundaries breached? If it's an Eruv before Shabbos, someone checks the Eruv and sees, is it any place where it's broken? Are your boundaries intact, protecting what you feel to be precious? Your marriage, your family, your energy, your health, your time, your resources. How is your boundary functioning? And then bring that left arm back to the heart center and back into the palms together and the thumb pressing towards the heart center. And let's go up again, breathing in, going up to the higher energies, opening up the fingers. Rest the top of your, your wrists that are together, rest it right above your head. That is your crown, your keter. Drop your wrist onto your fore, onto the top of your head, your fontanelle, and imagine that your wrists are pulling open the top of your head, pulling open, pulling open, open your crown, open the top of your head, your crown chakra or your keter point in the tree of life, open it to what's above. And then let's take our arms up with open wrists this time. And imagine that energies from above are pouring down into your consciousness. Energies of transformation, energies of newness, energies of change. Energies of transformation and change. Energies of transformation and change. Awesome.
Gotta give us Shabbos in the mail. Just this. Just what? Uh, just to get any other sentence? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> she said that our generation is just like the same generation as was there yeah. before they went out. So it means that we're so low. No, it's not. Okay, I'm sorry. My I'm son needs to beautiful. get out. Who's got a gray Hyundai that just came? I have a gray Volvo that I parked across the street. A gray Hyundai. I'm okay. walking right be behind. Just you. needs one car. And I'll tell you which car. I'm, 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 I have a black. I think it's me. A black Honda. Probably you. No, she's I'm a Hyundai. Hyundai. Okay, it's probably me. Oh, you know, I was hoping to see you. Yeah, you I know, know I'm running late. My nephew's getting married tonight. So oh, I was like, should I come? Should I come? Yeah. The person who parked on the right side so of I think the she left. Oh, I think it was her. Okay, so just give your keys to Yosef and he'll use your car. Yeah, I hope we'll give it on the table because I want to. I don't want to get up. Hi. Hi. All right. Well, we were in a nice meditation, and I was talking about the higher energies and transcending one's limitations, and then I displayed all my limitations. Being angry with my son, shouting at him. Okay, it's, it is you. All right, so, all right. So I was uh, saying before that you're going to give us Shavasana now for sure. <laughs> it's Thursday. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Gracious me. Okay, let's come back to where we were. Okay, breathing in and out. So let's take our arms out to the side and up. Wrists coming together, but let's leave an opening for this channel. So we're reaching up to the energies above. If we were a tree of life, our roots are planted above us. Our roots are rooted in what is above us. So our roots are rooting up to the higher energies, as Paula calls them, the higher energies. Keter, the light that shines, the light of inspiration, the light of revelation. It's shining above us. Pull down that light. The energy now in this sun, we just had Rosh Kodesh, is of transformation and change. Mm. If you used to lose your temper at your 20-year-old son, who just came back from his <laughs> ship and went to a wedding till 2 o'clock in the morning and is taking his brother home, don't. Or <laughs> do things differently. Tune into that energy of transformation well, you and yourself. bring it down. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it down. Let's yeah, bring it down. Third eye. And then to your throat. <laughs> and then to your heart. And then take that energy all the way down to your solar plexus. And let's breathe it in there. Breathe in that energy mm -hmm. into the solar plexus. Breathe it in. And breathe it out. Breathe it in and breathe it out. And let's open up the arms one more time and take the energy, the arms up. And once again, we're connecting in to how things can be different. What shadows do we have that we can shine light upon? That we can clean out and find new ways of doing things. Let's bring the palms down with the thumbs facing and we're gonna go all the way to the pubis, all the way into the pelvic area. 
And from that pelvic area, let's take our arms out to each knee. And from the knees, let's imagine the energy going up into that point where the legs connect into the torso. And we've got the spirit of Netzach and Hod. So taking your arm, your hand down your right thigh, down your right thigh, around your knee and back up to the core of your, to where your leg connects to your body and around your knee and back up and around your knee. And you can even not touch your knee. You could do it just lifting your hand slightly above. So it's the energy of that area, the energy of Netsa, the energy of pushing ahead, the energy of not wanting to be interrupted, the energy of move ahead and go, go, go and clean it out. Are there times when you have a plan and something interrupts your plan? How do you respond? And how do you react? Clean out your netzach of any mm -hmm. impurities or hummus, hummus that's resting there and then bring your hand back towards your, where your thigh connects to your body. And for the pod, take a deep breath in. And then let your left hand make a circle around your left thigh, around your knee. You're surrendering to moments, to realities in the now. You're surrendering to disturbance. You're surrendering to obstacles. You're surrendering to reality. You're surrendering to receive even gifts Sometimes we're getting gifts and even that we have to surrender to receive because maybe we're not used to receiving. Seems like an unusual place where you might need to practice surrender, but might be a place where you need to clean out some hummus, past trauma, where you didn't feel worthy to receive and now you're receiving. Clean it out, clean it out, clean it out. And then bring your hands back together and up, 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 up to the higher energies. And before we come down, let's stretch our legs out in front of us. Stretch the legs out in front of us. And for this last and final time, we're reaching up to what's above reaching up to the place of infinite knowing, a place of infinite connection, a place of infinite awareness, a place of support and a place of guidance. And then let's put our palm, our wrists together and our palms together and we're coming down and we touch on the third eye and we come down and touch the throat and come down into the heart center and down into the solar plexus and down to the pubis. And then let's take our hands and go all the way down the feet. You might need to bend your knees all the way down your feet to down your legs to your feet and holding on to the soles of your feet. And bringing this knowledge and awareness right down into the feet, into a, your stand, into your base, into your heels and your toes and the soles of your feet, your support, your malchus. And just breathe it in. How do you stand and what do you stand for? And how do you integrate all of who you are into where you walk and how you walk and how you stand up for what you stand up for? Let's take three nice deep breaths, breathing in and breathing out. <clears throat> Or 
all of our beings feed into the feet. That's why we have reflexology. Everything feeds into the feet. How are those feet receiving? Receiving from above. And then sitting up. And because Malchus is a complicated uh, sphera, it has another aspect to it too. So we're going to go up one more time, open up the hands, open up to the higher energies, to the higher knowings, to the light that's coming down into us and upon us. <clears throat> and bring those wrists together, the palms together, and let's come down, come down, come down. And place your thumb towards your throat. And then bring your thumbs up your neck into right under your chin. And feel your mouth opening and closing. Opening and closing. Opening and closing. And opening and closing. And take your hands out to the side. And open up your eyes. And Malchus is also how we articulate. It's our speech. <clears throat> so let's breathe in. We're going to do lion's breath. So breathe in and expel. <laughs> and bring, breathe in. And close your mouth for a, while, for a moment. So while we're clearing this out, doing our badikas from it, we want to think about our speech, about what we say, how we say what we say, what we say about ourselves, what we say about our experiences, what we say about others, what we say about the Israeli army, what we say about the Israeli government, what we say about anything and everything. How refined is our speech? How much chomets is in our speech? What is our speech accomplishing? And what is it building? And what is it destroying? Let's breathe in. And lion's breath. And breathe in again. And lion's breath. And one more time, breathing. And arms breath. And then arms out and up. Last time, receiving from above. Bring the hands down. Bring the hands onto the heart. So when we're leaving Egypt, this Pesach, unlike any Pesach that we've gone through before, we really have the capacity to heal and sweep out shadows and heal cracks and heal damage on every single part of us so that we can emerge out of Pesach ready for Gula. Maybe in the past we felt like we're doing Pesach. We'll do the best we can. We got limitations on how much we can clean. We've got limitations on how many orchim we can have. There's limitations on our shalom bias. There's limitations on our budget. There are no longer any external limitations to how much you can get out of Egypt, get out of your shadows, get out of your wounding, get out of your damage, get out of your traumas, this piss. Mm -hmm. There has never been a time like <clears throat> now in the history of any of our lives. There's never been a Pesach like now. 
where there is as much opportunity for transformation and healing as there is this Pesach. Never, ever. And this Pesach and this month of Nisan is going to have opportunities for transformation that are not going to be available anytime soon once Nisan is over. It's going to be different. There's a door opening that is never open and we can shift and change like never before. Take your arms out and up and just fold forward and just sit with that reality and drop your heads down. Torah is not a history book. It's not just a celebration of what happened to them there in those places in those days. It's an opportunity for us to go through these experiences for ourselves right now. When we eat the matzo, when we eat the maro, when we're sitting on the night of the two sadarim, the nights of the two sadarim, including the time until those two sadarim, all the processes, finding the sheep, setting it aside, eating the korban pesa, putting the blood on, cleaning out every sphera that you have, every aspect of personality and ways of being, all your defenses, all your shadow behavior, all your reactionary behavior, all your shouts and your screams and your eruptions and my eruptions. We've got a broom now like we've never had before. It's a supercharged, supercharged broom. Just clean out every corner, every recess, every shadow. And I'm not just saying this to sound dramatic. It is real. You can do it. We can do it. We can be different people after this sitting up, bring your feet together, stretch your feet out, 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 bring your feet inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale, and inhale, and exhale, and inhale, and exhale. So Malchus stretches out, bring it in. Malchus stretches out all down your legs to the ends of your being. Bring it in to your core. Stretch it out all the way out. Bring it in. Couple more, stretch it out, reach out, extend, take everything that you've learned out of your head, take it down, 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 right down to the soles of your feet. It's got to penetrate right from your top of your head to your big toe, to your baby toe, to the soles of your feet. Things have got to come down into every moment of your being. Bring your feet up. Two more, stretch out, come back, stretch out, come back, stretch out, leave them out. Good. Let's take our hands behind us. Let's work our shoulders. So we're going to take the shoulders back and squeeze the shoulder blades and forward. And back. As you take your shoulders back, you're opening up your heart center. We didn't talk about the heart center. So for the people who didn't hear it, Tiferet has 365 lights. One light for every day of the year. Hmm. Tiferet is the sphere of the Jewish people. And I didn't even know it until a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so grounding our hands into the mat, we're going to lift up into Hineni pose. So 
first we want to take the shoulders back, open that heart center, and then we're going to ground our heels and lift up into Hineni pose. Open that heart center, open it. Support your heart with your chesed and gavura. Support your heart with chesed and gavura. Support your heart with chesed and gavura and come down. And feet up and hands forward and take it forward. And let's rock side to side, rock side to side, side to side and side to side. Let's make a circle. So we're going to go from the left over to the right and left over to the right and left over to the right and left over to the right. Let's reverse the circle right over to left and right over to left, and right over to left, and right over to left, and stretch out those legs again, and let's try that Hineni pose again. So let's make sure our shoulders are ready for it, so we're going to take the shoulders forward, take them back, take them forward, take them back. We're opening the heart center, get it ready to open one more time, forward, and back then if your hands are struggling you can roll up your mat give yourself a little cushion if your wrists are a little struggling at all and give yourself a little cushion so extend those shoulders back inhale lift up shoulders back lifting up into that hineni pose hineni and come down Good. Feet together, coming forward, rocking from side to side, rocking from side to side. Good. Let's take the right leg out. I can't move from the full seat. Hmm? I can lift myself. We did that. I could not lift myself back. So when we lift, there's a lot of it's cool. It's, hard. it's, hard. it's you got to you got to press your feet down, press your hands down. And then you're not going to go up if you can't get this part. You've got to use your glutes. You've got to use. You've got to use some core strength, and you look. If you can't do it today, maybe you'll do it later. Yeah. Minutes. Um, you do bridge, but I can do this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. It doesn't mean you won't be able to do it next time. It could be just today. Just right now. Which leg is that? Hmm? Which leg is that? Right leg out to the side. Right leg out to the side. So stretching out to that netzach. So lifting up forward and leaning over to netzach. Leaning over to netzach. So in terms of, so let's face to the front, face to the, the foot. So in cleaning out Netzach, the, the hummus pre-Pesach clean, we want to take ego out of our Netzach presentations, right? So if we're doing things and we have a lot of, focus and we have a lot of drive and we have a lot of determination. We want to be aware of what role ego is playing in that. Satisfying ego, gratifying ego. We want to be aware of it because we're preparing for Pesach and come up. Let's go to the other side. When we stretch out into the hot capacity, the receiving, Mm -hmm. What role is ego playing in our ability to receive and our ability or our lack of ability to be grateful or to be acknowledging of other? Be aware. You've got to clean it out. You've got to take your vacuum cleaner and you've got to take your room. Good. Let's lift up that right arm. Place it down on the ground, lift up the left arm, we're stretching up. 
and stretching. Let's point that left toe down and stretch the right arm up and point the fingers away from your toes and come down and, and let's do it again. So we're going to lift up and stretch from big toe to fingertips. Nice stretch and down. And let's do it again. And lift and stretch. And nice down and over, extending over that left leg. I see my. Yeah, this is good. Good, and then coming up and stretching out. Arms, um, yeah. So we're stretching out the left leg. Yeah, so we're stretching out the right leg. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're stretching out the right leg, lifting up the right arm and stretching. So now from the toe of the left leg, a right leg, all the way to the fingertips. And down. And lift. And down. And lift. And down. And one more. Let's lift. <clears throat> and down. Sabrina, can you switch that off now? It's kind of getting too hot. Completely. Yeah, just switch it. Yeah. Good. Good, so let's come on to our feet. So it's interesting that our feet, Malchus, there's an aspect of Malchus in the feet, there's an aspect of Malchus in the, the um, bottom of the spine, kind of, it's part of our support. So here we are, we're in this little squat and we're going to come into a stand. So coming into the stand. Good. Let's go down back into the squat. So inhale, back into this. Whoops. Back into the squat. Good. And let's go heels down, up into the stand. Good. Inhale, exhale, back into the squat. Good, and up, and down. Good, and up, and down. How many more, Hi, sorry? Four. Up, one, and down. Up, two, and down. Up, three. And down. Up four. And down. And up and down, come down. And here we are. So there's an interesting reality that is coming into play. I'm loving it. You're loving it. I'm, I'm raging. I'm, 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 who knows what I'm doing? You're on fire, it's good. I'm fire. Okay. So there's an interesting reality that's coming into play. And the reality is Mashiach, right? It's a new way of being. It's a Mashiach Dika reality. So let's rock from heels to toe, from heels to toe. So one of the interesting things about Mashiach reality is that our bodies are going to be more important than they've ever been before. So what do I mean by that? So in previous times, people used their bodies to work in the fields to harvest their, their grains. They use their bodies to 
do all kinds of physical labor. But nobody thought, or not nobody, but most people didn't think of their bodies as sources of conscious awareness. Is that correct? Can we say that that's true? That the bodies weren't places that people thought that they're going to get information from their bodies. Where did they get information from? They went to the elders, they went to the teachers, they went to the parents, they went to Mashbir. From the Rebbe's teachings and other holy people, we're coming into an era where our bodies are going to be sources of information for ourselves and our growth and our development and our souls. Is that a, rad a radical idea? Not for you, it's not. Is it's that not. a radical I mean, idea for body. anybody? Did it ever make sense? No, no when, I, they, when I say is it a radical idea, I'm, I'm saying... It means is that like far in? Is that like, loading. wow? Or is that like, of course? No. Yeah. This generation is all about concentrating on your body when you're feeling it exactly. Where is it? Mm -hmm. You know? Somatic healing. Where is it in your body? <laughs> Intuition. Are you feeling the hairs prickling up on your back when somebody says... You know, take out the garbage now. <laughs> so being here and getting attuned and realizing that your body is the physical manifestation of your soul, but your soul is the spiritual manifestation of your body and getting attuned to your body. It's very part of the work that we need to do. Let's And even the work we need to do, let's change it to the play. We can enjoy playing instead of the work we need to do. So let's shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And then let's just let that heavy head just drop and roll down, roll down and hang there. Just let all the weight of carrying that head, you're just dropping down. Nice rounded back. And let's start straightening up. Straighten up, straighten up. Nice and slow, straighten up. Straighten up, hands to the lower back. Feet are very much parallel. Squeeze those shoulder blades and open up that heart center. Open up that heart center. Good, let's go for arms out to the side and up. And then arms down and again, roll down. Feel that spine opening, vertebrae by vertebrae. Space in the spine, opening in the lower back. Hang your head down. Just allow yourself to be folded forward. Take a few deep breaths. If you want to press your sitting bones up to the ceiling. That means that you straighten your legs and really lift your sitting bones up. And then rolling up, rolling up, rolling up, arms out. Lift up those arms. Let's take the arms out to the side and then back. <laughs> Interlock that. Interlock your fingers behind you. And let's squeeze those shoulder blades together. Now we got those nice open hearts. Nice open hearts. Let's make little circles behind us. Little circle, 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 circle. Let's circle the other way. Circle, no. circle, circle. We're going to do a forward fold. Arms are going to go up as we go down. So let's soften the knees, hinge at the hips, hinge, hinge, hinge. Arms go up, head goes down. And then as you come up, hands go down, keep them interclasped, head come up. Good. And then release your hands and shake them out. 
Shake them out, shake them out, shake them out, shake them out. Let's do that again. So we're shaking out the wrists. Good, let's do that one more time. So hands are going forward, hands are going to the back. Interclass your hands. So let's open up that heart chakra. Open up that heart, the Teferit center. Let's make circles, circles. So 365 lights. It's interesting because the solar year is 365 days. That's the way the moon, the, the sun is shining light into the world. Let's reverse that circle. So 365 different ways that that light shines into the world. The word Tiferet is connected to the idea of blending many different hues, many different colors into a harmonious whole. That's the beauty of Tiferet. Okay, so clasp your hands tightly, take your shoulders back. We're going down again. Soft knees, bend them, breathe in, extend the spine. Hinge at the hips, going down, going down, going down. Hands go up. Head goes down. And then hands go down. Head comes up. And let those hands go. Okay, so standing at the front of the mat. So it's interesting because as Jews, we have, as you heard the conversation last night, we are... Our calendar is according to the moon, but we bring that moon in sync with the sun in our calendar. So we're not just going on the moon cycle, we integrate the moon and the sun cycle. So lifting the arms up, inhale up, exhale, arms out to the side, hip a fold at the hips all the way down. Hang and then inhale, hands above the knees, flat back. Here we are in our flat back. Good. Let's stay in this flat back for a moment. No, you don't all have to step back. Just me because I didn't want to like not Sarabina. So right arm up and down. You mean Left arm up. up. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. And down. Both arms up. Awkward chair pose and down. And again. Awkward chair pose. And down. And again. Awkward chair pose. And down. One more. Awkward chair pose. And down. And hands to the floor and left leg back. I like it when you make adjustments to suit your needs. That's a sign of an advanced yogi. And right leg back. And lift up into downward facing dog. And let's walk the dog. Bringing one heel down, the other heel down, one heel down, the other heel down. Drop your knees, sit back in child's pose. Drop your knees, sit back in child's pose. We had a little bit of interruption with the whole car story, so if it's okay with you, we can go an extra 10 minutes. Good, coming up onto all fours. Up into all fours if you need a blanket under your knees, take a blanket for under your knees. If you don't, be grateful that your knees are so youthful and you don't need extra cushioning. Good, so here we are in tabletop pose. Let's do threading the needle. We're gonna lift up that left arm. So let's lift up that left arm as we're lifting it up. Give a squeeze on your whole feminine side, that whole realm of receiving in your life. Look at it. Let's make a circle of that left arm, big circles. Around and around. We spoke about you drawing the Gavura circle in which you Operate, take that circle. See how you're building the boundaries of that circle. 
everything precious inside that circle. So boundaries is feminine. The boundary mm -hmm. is feminine. Now take your left arm up. Take all those good boundaries, thread it through to your right side of action. And B. Take your right hand behind you. You took all those boundaries and you threaded them through to the right side. And just hang out in that reality. Good. And then bring your right hand down and come back into table. And let's do that on the right side. So I'm going to take the right arm up. This is your world of action. Let's draw the circle of your action. Draw the circle of your influence. Draw the circle of your, your doings. Draw the circle of your extending of yourself. Draw that circle. Draw it. One more nice big circle. And then take all of that and thread it into your feminine side of resting and being. And digesting. And take your right hand back behind your lower back. And just be with that. Integrating left and right. Left and right. And then hands, left hand back down. Good. So we're on our knees. Let's move forward into cobra pose. Our little cobra pose. Here we are opening up that heart center again, that Tiferet center. Hi, sorry, get your shoulders away from your ears. Press into your arms and lift up. That's it. You look less sunken in. Right? Yeah. And back onto the knees. Let's go up into downward facing dog. Up into the dog. Let's step that left leg. You can kick it high up in the air like Leah likes to do. <laughs> kick it high up and then step it between your hands. And then bring your right leg towards your foot and step up. And then we are upright once more. Good. <clears throat> we need a, a window open or are we okay? Maybe we need a little bit. Okay. So, hands to the center line. The center line is our balance point between all the extremities of the left and right. Let's open up to the left and to the right and up, 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 up to that. Kete point above the head. Good. Arms spread out. Hinge at the waist. All the way down and hang. Hands above the knees into our awkward chair pose. Good. Right arm up. Left arm up. Sitting in awkward chair. Let's take our elbows back and forward. And back and forward. And inhale, back and forward. And one more, back and forward. And hands down. And right leg back and left leg back and up into your downward dog. <clears throat> Go onto the balls of your feet and lift your heels up. And then drop your heels down and lift your heels up and drop them down and lift them up and drop them down. And one more, lift them up, drop them down, and then drop your knees onto the floor and sit back on your heels. Sit back on your heels. Before we carry on, let's do alternate nostril breathing. So with alternate nostril breathing, we literally activating and cleaning out the nostrils. It says when Mashiach comes, he's going to judge by his sense of smell. So when you breathe in, so first of all, 
everybody talks about, not everybody, many people talk about plant medicine and psychedelics. So what plant medicine and psychedelics do is that they somehow activate the gland in the brain called the pineal gland. Pineal gland can also be pineal, right? Pineal. So if you know how to breathe correctly, that you breathe in and you take the breath right to that pineal gland, and then you breathe out and you breathe in and you kind of like bring that breath right to the pineal gland, you can open up your own little psychedelic experience. I've never done it, but I know it can be done. So let's try and- You have to like do that like several times. On and there's a book called um, How to Change Your Mind. And it says that people who meditate intensely and people who use psychedelics have nearly identical brain waves. And they write about mm. a group of Kabbalistic scholars specifically who whose brain waves match people using psychedelics. So they achieve the same spiritual state without any external so all. So that is very amazing. So there's a Netflix documentary like based on the book. I haven't watched it. So you know, I have it on. How to change your mind. I think we actually have and that book somewhere. And I might be getting into that chapter. It's like a small note. It's not a focus. Yeah. Book, but they mention it like in passing. Right. So Peniel Glenn Peniel L. I know now I read it like three years ago. Yeah. How to change your mind. It's a very well known. I know. It's like what kind of work? Like it's not passively first or breath work. Experience. So I'm saying that the breath work. So Pinael means the way I understand it to mean is that all this talk that I did about open to higher realities, become conscious of the higher energies. So when you activate Pinael, it's like you're in a, a room that's kind of dull and dark, and then suddenly the lights go on. So it's what happens, I would imagine, is that instead of seeing reality like this, you see reality like that. And because when you see it like this, you're seeing it in kind of two-dimensional, three-dimensional reality, like objects of one on top of another, this is a solid, this is air, I am me, you are you. When you open into that, the lights go on, then you see the multi-dimensionality of reality, and then you see that I am really very interchanged with you, and you interchange with me, and although this is a blanket and this is a mat, it's really energy and it's all energy and you, you get that expanded consciousness experience. So we're going to do a mini experience of that through alternate nostril breathing. But if you did it for longer and longer and you settled into it, it could be a pathway to really like activate that. Thank you. So... Let's give it a go <laughs> in our limited time we have available. So closing off the left nostril and breathing in through the right. So we know we're breathing in through the right. It's the masculine, the pochma, the netzach, the um, kesed. Let's breathe in. Taking it up to that third eye point above the nose. Hold it. Breathing out, you're dispersing that energy to the left side, the feminine side. Breathe it out. Breathe in on the left, the Bina, the Gavura, the and the Hod. Hold it in. Imagine that it's stimulating that little pineal gland. Pineal, pineal, it's the size of a pine nut. And breathe it out on your right side. Breathe it in on the right. Hold it. Breathe it out on your left. Breathing in on your left. Hold. 
breathing out on your right. Pene'el means you also connect to your deepest self. You go in to go out. So breathing in on your right. Hold. Breathe out on your left. Mm. Breathe in on your left. Hold. Breathe out on your right. Breathe in your wisdom, your guidance, your guidance from above. Breathe it in. Breathe it out to your Venus side. Breathe in your integration, your capacity to digest and process information. Breathe it in. Hold it. Breathe it out. Breathe in your kindness, your extending yourself, your love, your hard energy of connection. Breathe it in. Hold it. Breathe it out. Breathe in your need for quiet and for privacy and for integrating and for silence. Breathe that in. Breathe it out on the right side. Breathe in your need for action and accomplishment and success. Breathe it in and hold it. Breathe it out for your side of releasing expectations and attachment to outcome. Breathe in your capacity to rest and let go and appreciate what you've accomplished. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And last time, let's breathe in all of these qualities integrated all the way down to the bottom of your being and to the top. Breathing it in on the right, the masculine strengths that you have. Breathe it out. And the feminine strengths that you have. Breathe those out. And just keep your eyes closed for one minute, moment. And then open your eyes. So Pene L is also get to know you, your soul, your deepest part of you. Let's put hands to the floor. We're still on a, in our tabletop. Let's stretch out into downward facing dog. Let's walk those legs so that we can stretch them from where we were just sitting. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Let's kick up that right leg high up into the sky. Up, 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 and step it forward between your two hands. And then step your left leg up and coming up into a stand and up and down. Good, and now we'll come into our balance. So let's do the tree. And as we do the tree, I want you to play, let's start on the left side. We're gonna bring the left leg up into tree. So I want you to play with these ideas of the tree of life which has its roots above. So the tree of life is rooted in what's above and it grows downwards from what's above towards the earth. And then we have the earthly plane 
of trees that are rooted in the earth and reach upwards. So just be connected to those two different trees and two different ways of thinking of yourself, rooted down and reaching up or rooting up and grounding what's up into what's below. And then coming down. And on the other side. So after this, we'll come into Shavasana. So if we find our tree, we root it up. Imagine your fingers are different roots growing into the soil of all those upper lights and wisdoms and guidance and energy and everything that's available to us from what's above. And how we bring that down into our being and into the groundedness of reality. Wow, I must be drunk this morning. I think I am a little drunk. I'm not sure on what, but I am a little drunk. <laughs> And then the other reality where we're pulling up from the ground and feeding our energy upwards, sharing what we pull out of being and coming down. And let's step to the front of our mats and bend our knees and then sit back and then laying down on the ground. Hug your knees to your chest. If there's anything your body needs to do before Shabasana, otherwise just come into Shabasana, finding your way into resting. It's a wonderful time to be alive. It's a great schus to be alive right now. From what I understand, there are opportunities now, energetically, that have never been present or available before. Levels of conscious awareness and understanding Levels of connecting to our bodies, receiving information from those bodies, receiving information on a multidimensional level without psychedelics, just through practices of bringing you into presence and quietness and openness have never been more available to us as a species. Throw in the Jewish piece with our souls that have heightened capacity for connection, plus the time right now In the world in general, the eclipse, the comets, the planetary alignments, plus the Jewish opportunities of Pesach and the way that Hashem brings the Jewish people to new levels of freedom at this time. 
it's a great opportunity and a great success to be alive right now. We're going to start to come out of this um, Shabbasana, but I just want to read you a poem. I was looking for it. It's called The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean the one who has flung herself out of the grass and one who is eating sugar out of my hand. Who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down? Who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes? Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? When you're ready, you can start coming out of this beautiful moment of Shavasana, rolling over to the one side and then sitting upright. Slowly, slowly coming into a seated pose. Once you're upright, just Take your flashlight from the top of your 
Pantanal, just checking all the areas of your being, if everything feels clear and open. If you want to continue in Shavasana, feel free. Let's take our arms out to the side and up. And down the center line, hands on your heart. Blessing all of us for a redemptive, liberating, transformative experience of Pesach. We should meet again, transformed, free, redeemed. In your shalom. Is there class next week? No class next week. Wow. Rafa has to clean. <laughs> no class next week. I won't be able to make Pesach if I have classes next week.